Hi everyone, I'm Paul with Madcap Software. Welcome to our next video in this series on styles in Madcap Flare. Now, uh, if you happen to hear noise in the background, as I said in the previous video, if you just watched that one, you know I'm doing this in the middle of a thunderstorm. And uh, so as soon as I'm done with this, I'm gonna have to go find one of my beagles who I know is hiding under a blanket and let her know everything's okay. That's important for you to know. All right, so we are going to talk in this video about Madcap specific styles and properties, because when you open up a style sheet in Flare, you're not only going to see all these standard CSS styles that are used by everybody everywhere, but you're going to see some unusual things. And that's because Flare has these features that, uh, that we've just added over the years. And in order to control their look and feel, we had to add some specific styles and properties. So we wanna jump into Flare and take a look at these and see what's what. All right, let's open up our style sheet in this little project. We've got it right here and I'm in the advanced view. And doesn't matter whether you're in the advanced view or the simplified view, you're gonna see these things. Now you're looking here, on the left side at your styles. We're gonna talk about styles first and then we'll get into properties. So styles, you're going down and everything looks normal and then you start hitting Madcap. Okay, this is where we have in added our own stuff because we have all these features, annotations, body proxy, uh, the code snippet, um, concept links, drop downs, all the way down, you go all the way down until you get to Madcap Extra. Those are all Madcap specific styles that we needed to add. For example, I can come in here and let me just add uh, some junk into this topic and I'll insert a dropdown. You don't see, you know, that that's just not a common thing uh, elsewhere, uh, at least th this feature and the way that it's done in Flare. So I selected these paragraphs and I go to my insert ribbon and select insert drop down text and you look over on the left and it added not just one but multiple structure bars there's multiple styles going on here so we got madcap drop down that's the outer one all right and then this one right here is for the head madcap drop down head and this one madcap drop down body and of course you can see these if you go into the text editor and look behind the scenes. And so these things had to be added to the style sheet. So you come in here, madcap, drop down, drop down body, drop down head. And there's, and there's a hotspot one in there as well. Okay. Uh, you see it up here because it's a, the, it's a character level. So we've got those drop downs. So you want to uh, control any parts of the drop down. Maybe you want this hot spot or the head to be smaller, to be a certain color. Uh, you can even associate uh, you know, an image next to it for it to display whether it is expanded or collapsed. You can do these things like that. Another really common one is, let me do this. Look at these typing skills here. All right, a cross reference. So. When you want to link from one thing to another, if you look at these buttons here on the ins on this uh, ribbon, the local toolbar, actually, you got insert a hyperlink, you got insert a cross reference. They are also up here. There's insert hyperlink. There's cross reference right there. So we usually tell people you want to use a hyperlink if you're linking to something that's outside of your project a website or something like that and you can link to other topics other places in your um in your project if you want the text to say something specific for example maybe i want to uh, link to the getting started topic right there but i want my link i don't want it to say that i want it to say click here or something like that right uh, if I can spell it right. Okay, get rid of that. So I want to say that specifically. And so I would use a hyperlink. But if I want it to, let's say I'm at the end here, and I want it to say exactly what the heading is in here, getting started, I can insert a cross reference. And so it's using a format. And if I, and I open this up and you can see all this madcap XREF 
Okay, so these are styles. Madcap XREF is the main one. And then there's all these other possi possible ones in there. Most of the time you're gonna use Madcap XREF. You select that and it's using a command. So getting started is the first heading in here. And that's what it's set up to use in, in, in this case. All right, so you have the, the link one, if I were to do that and link to something, a website or a file in the project, all right, I wanted to say click here, but it's going to that topic. Okay, well, that, I click on that, that's a simple A link, but this one is a Madcap XREF, all right? So this is a really important one. And so you can change the formula, uh, the command that tells it what to do, you know, Maybe you don't want it to be based on the first heading. Maybe you want it to be based on something else. And so it's really cool. It'll just be automated. Or you want to change the color. You can do all that. So you would do that in here with Madcap XREF. And some of these also have children under them for very specific things. Okay. Now, these, uh, of course, were developed for these features. And some of these features, some of these styles also have properties that specifically go with them. Now, I have Madcap XREF selected here, and I select font, or I, I come over here, and these are just regular properties, and I can use all of those. But I also, under unclassified, if you're working in group view, if you're not working in group view, then it's, you know, just in line, it's like with everything else. You see this MC format. See these Madcap specific properties are in that, in that, um, in that group view under unclassified. So right now you're just seeing assorted relevant properties. If I were to switch to all properties in here, you would see all these groups, right? You're going to see font and everything else. And the Mad cap specific stuff is down here under unclassified. And you know it's a Madcap specific property because it begins with MC. And the quickest way to understand, okay, I've got a Madcap XREF, what's the property that I'm that really goes with this? Because MC breadcrumbs count doesn't go with it. But I could go in here, filter by assorted relevant properties. And there it is, MC format. That is the special property that is letting me set the format, the command in this para means is, hey, look at the paragraph, look at the, that first paragraph in there. And, and, and that's what you want to see as the link text. All right. So, and they're, and they're all this way, this Madcap TOC proxy. Well, okay. MC output support. That's the one that goes with that. Sometimes there's one and sometimes there's multiple ones. All right. So that is it. I just kind of wanted to go over these special styles and properties because you're going to see them, and uh, and they're not. You're not going to find information about them out there at w3.org. You've you're going to find it here uh, with Madcap. And if you see something in here, you know you're just looking through this list and you're going, oh well, Madcap glossary proxy. What's that about? What what do all these things mean? Well, what you can do is go into the help and you can uh, search for, you know, if you see the name of it, just type it in here. Uh, that was glossary proxy, oops, spelled just like that. That's how it was in the UI. And there it is. This piece of micro content comes up and says, this is what it's used for. And this is the topic, you know, where it's used, editing how a glossary looks. And then if you want to see all the Madcap specific styles and properties, open this topic and they're all in here. So you got the styles and you got the properties, right? And you can just kind of go through them and read about each one. I know, I know you want to, I know you want to go read about all of these, uh, but no, you're, you're probably going to have a question about one specific one, a style or a property, and that's how you get to it. All right, and so that's going to do it for this short video, and uh, my beagles are glad. So thanks for watching, and uh, we're just going to continue in this series and learn the next thing about styles in Flare.